Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 160 of the Deaf Free Dad podcast. So according to a recent poll, 73% of Americans now say that their finances are their number one source of stress. And 68% of people admitted their finances didn't improve or stayed exactly the same here in 2022. So how can you fix this in 2023? What are some ways you can reduce financial stress? What are some ways that you can feel better about your finances going into next year in 2024? We are going to be talking about this and sharing some of our best financial stress reducing tips on today's show. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Debt Free Dad Podcast with Brad Nelson. Brad and his co-hosts experience the anxiety of living paycheck to paycheck before learning the fundamentals of financial security. They are now on a mission to empower regular people to pay off their debt for good and enjoy happier, less stressful lives. Keep listening for inspirational interviews, tips, tricks, and practical advice to gain financial freedom. Hey, hey, how's everyone doing? You can find me on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, uh, Defrey Dad. And as always, welcome to today's show. Remember to get all the resources, show notes, and links for today's show or our other 159 episodes. You can head over to balancesense.com forward slash 160. That's B A L A N C E D C E N T S dot com forward slash 160. So guys, I had these uh, articles kind of come up and, you know, I'm, I'm constantly checking out the websites and, and, you know, the, the more popular, you know, websites on personal finance and the news that comes out. And quite honestly, most of the, and I don't know, you guys tell me, most of the articles that I read on there are, are, are unfortunately pretty much garbage. <laughs> you know, they really are. <laughs> um, there, there's really not after Maybe, you know, when I first started working on my finances and I would read some and they'd be like, oh yeah, that's pretty smart. But now that I've like learned more about this, most of the articles on there really just keep people and pointing them in the, in the kind of the wrong direction. (laughs) You know, they'll, they'll have a couple of good points to share, but most of them are like, yeah, I don't know about that. Right. And today I just want to share these two with you guys, um, as we kind of bring up this topic of, of financial stress. And, And this first one comes from. Uh, see, actually, they're both from CNBC, and, and the title of this one is 73% of Americans write their finances as the number one stress in, in uh, life, according to a new Capital One CreditWise survey that was done at the end of December in 2022. So at the time of this recording, you know, we're talking six weeks ago. Um, it says, if the state of your finances is stressing you out, you're far from alone. This week, Capital One released the results of a new CreditWise survey in connection with National Get Smart About Credit Day. Notice... Get smart about credit day, right? (laughs) The results found that finances are the number one cause of stress, 73% more than politics, which is 59%, work, which is 49%, and family, which is 46%. Younger generations are even more stressed about finances than older generations, with the majority of Gen Zers, 82%, and millennials, 81%, saying finances are at least somewhat stressful. The survey unsurprisingly found that major life events can trigger financial stress as well. More than half, 62% were stressed about their money in relationship to buying a house. 61% were stressed because of a car purchase. And despite finances being a major cause of stress, respondents are optimistic about their financial future. Roughly two in five, 42%, said they expect to be better off financially in a year from now. However, they may not know how to achieve those goals. Only 16% of those respondents are very familiar with how to improve their credit score. Again, credit score. But more than half of the respondents, 59%, are interested in learning more. Capital One provides a free credit score and report dashboard, of course. We're not going to talk about that one, right? But... As this kind of goes on, it's mostly just referring back to, oh, building, you know, your credit and your credit score. But the big one I want to talk about is just this percentage of of 73% saying finances uh, are their number one source of stress. And the second article uh, is titled, More Than Two-Thirds of Americans' Financial Situation Did Not Improve or Stayed the Same Here in 2022. And this goes on to give tips on how to better your finances in 2023. And guys, check this out. Would you believe the first tip? is how to improve your credit score. <laughs> so you can borrow more money. So you can borrow more money, right? Here, here's how to improve your credit score so you're more credit worthy, right? Ay, ay, ay. 
You're so tempting me, Brad. We got to stay away from that today. <laughs> What's that? Yo, no, no. I don't want to stay away. That whole, that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other oh, topic. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, put yourself in a better position to borrow money in the future. Yeah, that's the number one goal to get yourself to stop being stressed. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it How does pay off your debt. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I will say, I will give. <laughs> I will give this writer at least a little bit of credit. Um, this is by Jasmine uh, Sukninen, I guess the last name is. Sorry if I murdered that name, but improve your credit score is number one. But number two is uh, make a plan for spending mindfully, which I, I think that's pretty good. Reduce your debt, which, Chris, you just mentioned. Uh, the fourth tip was uh, increase your income. So obviously income-producing activities. And the last one is speak to a financial planner. So, I mean... Not terrible, but leading off the article with building credit, nah, not so much. So um, so what do you guys think of these? I mean, do these numbers, I mean, I've seen the financial stress survey anywhere between 50 to 60%, but 73% is the highest that I've ever seen it uh, since starting this business. You know, I've been doing this almost seven years now, and I've never seen it at 73%. Now, obviously, I think inflation is playing a role in that, but... Um, what, I mean, what do you guys think about these numbers? And I mean, do they surprise you at all? No, not at all. In fact, you, you started this off by talking about how most, most articles out there is financial noise. It's garbage. But the, the premise of these two articles is probably absolutely accurate. I think that many people are struggling. That many people are, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, frustrated. Uh, now, what to do about it's a different question. Right. But Brad, I mean, you've done coaching long enough. I've done coaching. There's you you're well aware that the vast majority of people they're uncomfortable about something to do with their money. Seventy three percent is I a mean, big I, number though. <laughs> it's a lot. I, I do think well I mean I do but, think but that, you know, sixty seven percent you said their their finances didn't improve. There's not a big difference between sixty seven percent and seventy three percent. Right. And you know and I know the numbers are typically in the sixty percent. Right. So it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say they're now at seventy three percent, particularly with debt levels going up. You know, the credit card debt's been going up, student loan debt's been going up, and you talked about the Gen Zs and the millennials. When you got one point seven trillion, I haven't looked at the statistic lately of student loan debt. It, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. I do think too that I mean inflation. I mean inflation is a thing, right? I mean it's not it's not a pretend. I mean it it is it is high. Um, I do think if you also look at you know housing prices over the last few years, you know my son. We're working with my son to try to move out, and it's just we're kind of being we're kind of getting hit with like some shell shocked like how much for like a small little 700 square foot, one bedroom apartment? Like, I mean, those are real things I think people are facing. Um, you know, I look at just eight years ago, nine, almost nine years ago that we bought this house and I look at the value today and I'm just, I scratch my head and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my son going, man, I mean, it, it's not like our wages went up that much as well. So I do think there are some real stressors that are also, contributing to this as well. Um, you know, and I think when inflation is not bad and the economy is great, right? We all pretend like a recession or the economy is just going to continue to do great. So we spend money like everything's great. But then when these things happen, which once we get through this, just newsflash for everybody listening, we will have another one of these. This, I mean, history is shown over and over again. You go through periods where it's great and we have another slip and you fall back. Um, it's just people are not preparing themselves for when this happens. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, you saw back when, you know, the housing bubble happened back in what, 08, 09, 2010 in that area. And, you know, you saw the same thing. People tightened up, but then as, you know, that kind of went away, you know, consumer confidence went back up and obviously people went back to kind of their old ways of handling their money. But I think, you know, this is another great topic for a show. And I think we should kind of, we should table this a little bit because I think the whole, the whole topic of has, has the American life become even affordable anymore, you know, for, for most people, as far as buying houses and cars and, and all of those things. And, and are you actually able to do it the way that you used to be able to do it? Are you, are you able to actually afford to, 
newer cars with payments and a house now and all of this stuff. And I, I mean, I think the straight up answer is for most of us, no, absolutely not. Like you're going to have to sacrifice some things because things have just become too expensive. And, and the wages, like you said, Ryan, haven't kept up with a lot of that stuff. So, so what would you guys well, share? Think, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Well, I, I think you were going to mention the same thing. The good news is there is hope. There are plenty of people who are not stressed about money, at least 27%. Right. <laughs> and if you think about it, that's almost one out of every four people. And there, you know, there's plenty of resources on your site, plenty of, plenty of people in your program who have done it. You've got several of these podcasts out with stories of people who did phenomenal things. And, and there's plenty of other stories out there, if you look around, about people who aren't stressing anymore about money. And they all tend to have one thing in common. And that is, they got themselves out of debt. I have never heard a story of any individual who said, my life's miserable since I paid my, since I paid my debt off. It just doesn't happen. So I'm not making this a dead argument. My point is there are people who have tackled these demons, who have overcome them, and those are the resources that you need to listen to, talk to, and and kind of put the financial noise away and gain some hope from the fact that there are people who have done it and you can do it as well. And Brad, you know that the important thing about it being a coaching is you never focus on the past. Right. You always want to focus on the future. And if you can set your mind towards the future, and that's why having your why and your goals and some of the things we've talked about are important because when all you think about is what the, you're moving forward the next day and you're not focused on what my boss did to me 10 years ago, what this person did to me, that person, why I'm in the situation that I'm in and all you focus on the solutions. That's a big way, I think, to get over, to, to start, I should say, yeah. learning to deal with the stress. And you know, the more that you, the more you learn to deal with these things, the more you get out of debt, the more your man, money starts to, to better manage itself, the less stress you just naturally have. And so it's a process. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking about the benefit of, of moving towards more of a growth mindset. And I think, I think where most people are challenged and what I'm hoping to get out of the show today for some people is just what are some of the things that have helped us reduce that stress? Because, you know, when, when you're, when you're buried by a lot of payments and debt, a lot of financial stress, it's hard to have that proactive growth mindset, right? You know, um, I'm going to be super positive about my situation because it seems like no matter what I do or no matter what I try, it just never seems to work, right? And I know how that feels. You know, I, I know how what it feels like to be in that situation. So I think for me, I think, and, and you guys share, but number one on the list for me is as far as, you know, if I was going to give suggestions on what could help you reduce financial stress is, is really education. It, it really is. And, and I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of misunderstanding about personal finance and that it's this difficult topic and that you've got to be like super good at math and, and, you know, super smart and, you know, not really, you know, <laughs> look at me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, for real, you don't, it's really just about educating yourself. And I think the, the basics of personal finance, things like, you know, living below your means and patience and living on a budget and learning and creating the habit of saving and, uh, paying down your debt, even if you don't want to become completely debt free, just reducing the amount of debt that you have, like just these basic concepts. And, and it, that's a lot of what's going to help you be super successful if you can master just those basic things. So, you know, educating yourself, like Chris said, you know, listen to the stories that are on this show and hear what these people are doing. And a lot of what these people are doing are the same things that anyone could do. Um, they're not just limited to those individuals, but, you know, listening to podcasts, get a coach, you know, obviously we have our free workshops on our website. I mean, this is why our business now exists is to help people really reduce financial stress. That's the main goal of what we do here. So I think education well, just I, plays I a huge the, role. I love the education part of it. I think it's important that you educate yourself, but also like people I think are feeling shame and it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to just break out of that and to have a discussion or talk about that or bring it up with a friend or find somebody. And I think the education part will help you kind of break out of that shame feeling of where you're sitting right now. Well, and, and if you're feeling that way, I think we just shared some statistics, right? I mean, if you're feeling shame and you're feeling stressed and all this stuff, 
eighty percent, seventy three percent of people. We just we just shared some statistics that there's a good chance that the majority of the people you talk to are feeling the exact same thing. Yeah. Right. So why aren't we talking about it? Like right. it's such a taboo talk of it. Nobody right. wants to talk about it. Right. Well, I think, you know, like, like, let's look at social media. You know, you open up social media, you open up Instagram, TikTok, and you see all these, you know, the nice houses and all this nice stuff. And it's like you, you automatically just assume just by the look of it that they have money, right? Because that's just, that's just the easy way to associate it with if you're not educated on these statistics. That's 73% or almost 7 out of 10 people live paycheck to paycheck. You would just assume because they have nice things and nice stuff that they're doing well. But in reality, a lot of those people behind closed doors are probably feeling very much just like you. They, they just might have a little bit of a nicer rapper than you, you know, maybe nicer things, so to speak. But, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's easy just to assume that you are the only one because man, look at all these people. They're going on these vacations. They're buying these new cars and they have all these nice things. It's like, what am I doing wrong? And I think there is, I think part of that shame is a lot of just social influence that's going on. So I think a big takeaway is if you're listening to this podcast right now, where you are is normal. Does it make it right? Does it make it great? Does it make it, I guess, bad per se? It's normal. And just recognize that, that there is a path forward. And like you meant, mentioned, educate yourself. Do things like just something simple. Start to get your, your finances organized. Just get down and open up your checkbook register or your online statement, your credit card statements, and just start to jot down where you've been spending money. Just start some kind of action. Anytime we do something, we feel like we've at least accomplished something, even if it's really small. And from that, you begin to realize where you're spending money. And I know there's a lot of things we could talk about here, but it helps you to figure out where you can cut your spending at. It can help you to figure out how much debt you've got so you can begin to develop a plan. And so sometimes educating yourself is not just about what should I be doing or what am I doing wrong or what is everybody else doing wrong, but where am I at right now? And sometimes, I shouldn't say sometimes, that's probably gonna create a little bit more stress to begin with, is admitting how bad it is. But that's the first first step if you want to be able to get a budget together, start to control your spending, and and develop a plan. Yeah, well, I think that bring you and know I, that that whole feeling though that you brought up, Chris, that um, it's gonna f- make you feel like you're stressed. I think that makes it even more important. Like what Amber, like you said, is talking and finding a community of like minded people because they they can be there to support you, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of our, you know, we have our free life without payments group, we have our free debt free dad community group if you buy a planner. And that's part of the reasons why that those communities exist. It's why we have a private roots group for our roots members. It's because we're all, we're all going through this journey together and and when you go through actions like this, you might feel a little gross once you start doing some of this stuff. And it's it's always nice to post like, "Hey, I just did this and yikes, I'm not feeling so good." And then all of a sudden all these other people are commenting like, Hey, you're, you're okay. You're exactly where you need to be. I felt the same exact way, but here I am now, right? It's, it's all part of the process. So getting that support, I think is huge and helping you reduce a lot of the stress, especially when you're getting started. Yeah. And like my number one, like the number one tip I would have for people, it really ties into, you know, understanding like where stress is coming from. And for us, like we were a hundred percent, the type of people that were, all the external forces in the world were the reasons why we were in the way we were, right? It's why we were in debt. It's the economy, it's the inflation, it's my student loans. It's, I don't, I don't make enough money. It was all these other things. And I felt, and I think a lot of us, and again, you go to social media, we love to connect with people who also like to point fingers. And then it's like, see, everyone else feels the same way. And for us, when it was finally like, okay, look ourselves in the mirror, take ownership of the situation, even if things may not be fair. And when we did that is when we started to see results and when things became less stressful, because like, if you just keep pointing fingers at all these things you can't fix, you're never going to get anywhere because you're in a spot in your own mind where you think you can't fix it because it's impossible because I can't control any of this, but you can control yourself. And what we found is the majority of the problems were us. It wasn't 
Yes, these external forces cause problems, but the majority of the issues were caused by our own doing. And once we did that, like Chris said, it was stressful at first because it was like that egg in the face, like, oh, I feel kind of bad now. But once that was over, it was like, now we can start making progress because it's not all these external forces problems anymore. It's my problem and how do I fix this? I think that's very well said, Ryan. It's probably a better way of putting what I said something earlier, and that is, you know, thinking about moving forward. Um, I used to teach my students, Brad, that uh, one of one of the main principles I try to drive home to them, that you are your own worst financial enemy, Right. that you will do yourself in. And as soon as you recognize that, then you begin to fix yourself like Ryan's talking about. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, that goes along with what I mentioned with the growth mindset of, I think that's a hard, it's a hard mindset shift for a lot of people who are struggling is to go to that more to that growth mindset. And it's the same thing in recognizing that you're the problem because it's so easy just to point the finger and blame everybody else. It's, it really is a mindset shift when you start saying, okay, I'm no longer going to put energy, emotion and effort and thought into stuff that I can't control. Yes, I can't control inflation. It just is what it is. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to control what I can control, which is my spending habits and saying no and putting together a budget and living below our means and, you know, practicing patience and delayed gratification and, you know, so on and so forth. Like we can keep going and going of all the things that we can do, but all too often we focus on the things that, you know, that, that we, we can't really have any control over. And so I think um, those two mindset shifts are huge when it comes to reducing stress. Cause I think once you get through those, um, it, it gets easier over time. And if you could determine what you value most too, like, what do I value most? What's my goal? Where do I want to be in one year, two year, five years? And then think about what you're going to buy that day. Is it getting you closer to that goal? Is it getting you to that value? What you value most? Is that going to help you? And if you really think about, start thinking about your purchases every day, that might kind of wield you back and help you to get on the right path to the less stress. Yeah, totally agree. Building a filter, like a buying filter for your life, you know, and that's what, that's what yeah. a, lot, a lot of ways what you begin to do when you change your mindset, start practicing some of these habits is you, is you now build this new filter and you're putting all your purchases through this filter and you're asking yourself, does this fit within what we want to do? Does this help us reach our goals or does it push it, push us farther away? And that changes, that changes the, the purchasing habits right there just by taking a second and just putting some different thought into that. The other thing I will say too, I think if, if you're really looking and you want a quick way to reduce financial stress, uh, I mean the single, one of the single best things you could do is just build yourself a savings account, an emergency fund, like small one, even just a thousand to $3,000, which was what we recommend. I mean, just even that little amount of money can, can just make you feel better. And, and if you're listening to this guys, I mean, when, when we talk about some of the saving and paying off numbers here that have happened here at Def Free Dad, 99% of the time, the emotions have improved faster than the numbers came. So that means that people felt less financial stress. They felt better. They felt more hope. They felt more peace of mind much faster than they started to see the saving numbers and the debt payoff numbers. Because once they had a plan, once they had everything put together, once they had it organized, which is basically what we give them inside the membership, inside Roots, once they knew and knew everything they needed to do, and then they started seeing other people have the results, it was like, all we just need to do is do this. And that took away a lot of the stress just by having everything put out there. And and the path was already laid out in front of them. They just had it implemented into their lives. Yeah, I think I think stress and confidence are two sides of the same the same story. Two people can be in the exact same situation. And in order to, to stop stressing, you got to gain some confidence. You know, if you are your own worst financial enemy, you're also your number one solution too. And you're right just a small victory, even if it's $500 in an emergency fund to begin with, right? That's $500 more than you had a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago. It's the little steps and, and compounding works in so many ways of our lives, not just in investing, you know, 500, when you figured out how to get 500, it's a lot easier to figure out how to get the next 500 and have a thousand dollar emergency fund. And then it's easier to figure out the next thousand to get 2000 and so forth. And then it carries over with debt and paying off debt. It's the small little victories go out and get yourself something, some small little victory. And I think you're going to find you have a little bit less stress and then the confidence and the growth mindset starts to build from there. Yeah. How do you guys feel? Um, last point I want to make before we go to commercial and do some celebrations here today, but um, do you guys care anymore? 
about what other people are doing? Has that changed for you? Like when we talk about social influence and comparing yourself to other people and worrying about what other people had, you know, how, how do you guys, what's your mindset now compared to what it used to be? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, Ooh, I wish I was on that vacation. Ooh. But then I, I go back. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. No, vacations no, no. are tough. Like Chris, Chris in Hawaii, you know, when you were in Hawaii for two weeks, I was a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> right. So like you see it, you're like, Oh, but then you go and look at your, whatever your plans are, your goals are. And you're like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. But you're going on vacation <laughs> it's, too. It's, you're going on vacation too. And I, I am be, going on vacation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but here's the thing is I came back from that vacation with one thing, a bunch of, well, two things, memories and photographs. Mm-hmm. Right. I did not come back with a single bill, a single deck. It was all paid for up front. Yeah. yeah. And so the, your question though, I could care less what anybody thinks about me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I am so far beyond all of that. In fact, sometimes I take pride in people going, that's the weird guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it, it's been said a thousand times. You want to be different. Think differently. Yep. That's how you become different. And then you don't end up like 73% of Americans. Yeah, it's true. There's a, there's a book uh, called the psychology of money by Morgan household. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have read it, but I love it. Um, but there's a, and I don't, I'm not going to say it verbatim of the quote, but it's, it kind of goes along the lines of uh, people with uh, really good personal finance skills and people who have done really well with money have all a really strong a uh, sense of they don't really give a damn what anybody else thinks about them. And they said that that across the board, that is what most people find. Those people who are really good at managing their money, they are not influenced by what other people are doing with with their money on the outside. And and that's important as it comes to, you know, your stress. You know, you you might be stressing yourself by stressing out yourself by comparing yourself to other people that are out there. But remember, the thing you need to think about every time is that 78% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And whatever that you're looking at that they have, likely that thing is probably causing them a lot of stress. And it just helps you refocus and get back to your own plan. So the Totally Awesome Debt Freedom Planner is helping so many people make consistent progress with their finances. Whether that be building emergency funds, paying down bills, budgeting, tracking paydays, saving up for larger purchases, goal planning, and planning for those irregular yearly expenses that always seem to catch you by surprise. Now, the Debt Freedom Planner will help you take the stress out of managing your money. And if the thought is running through your mind, hey, I just need to have a simple tool to get my finances together, this planner is perfect for you. Head over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu at the top of the page, and order your Debt Freedom Planner today. All right, all right. That's on means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And Amber's kicking it off for us today. With Jessica Rose, I did my Roots 15 this morning and realized we have $14,865 in credit card debt left. And then we're 100% debt free. Seven of nine accounts at zero, at least until we find a house to purchase. I'm so excited. I started this journey in 2016. Yeah, that is awesome, Jessica. Congratulations to you. Job well done. And that's got to feel good. Seven of nine accounts that are now gone. Talk about stress relieving, right? Just not having so many. That is awesome, Jessica. Congratulations. Brendan Belger going through stuff in the basement that we haven't used and getting rid of it. Yes, decluttering. I love that, Brandon. Great win. And Aaron Hood. My emergency fund is back up to $3,100 plus and was able to set aside $600 for some new tires later this month. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations, Aaron. Uh, Bobby Johnston, making the last payment on a loan I took against my 401k to refinance my house last year. Yeah, that's got to feel amazing to get that money back in there. Awesome job, Bobby. And Max Wilder, my partner started working and that pretty much doubles our income. So now we have more funds to meet our goals of six months worth of expenses. Yeah, that's incredible. Congratulations, Max. And again, congratulations to all of you who are taking the journey to create less financial stress in your life. And if you're just getting started with our podcast, or maybe you've been listening for some time and you're interested in how you can get started on the road to financial freedom, Visit our website at balancesense.com and sign up for my free Life Without Payments workshop where I'm going to show you the first steps 
that have helped tens of thousands of people just like you and I kick financial stress and worry for good. Thanks for listening to the Debt Free Dad Podcast. Connect with us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Brad Nelson Debt Free Dad. If you found value in today's episode, please leave a rating and review. We so appreciate it. For resources, show notes, and links mentioned in today's show, visit balancedsense.com. That's balancedsense, C-E-N-T-S.com. Catch you next week.